This is William Michael of the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, and in this video I'd like to provide students who are getting started in Lesson 5 of Latin Grammar 1 with some help with their first reading of Article 7. We've already talked about the content of Article 7, which is the sounds of consonants, in our uh, past few lessons. So, this will be a good review, but it's a, a time for us to make sure we master the sounds of the Latin consonants so we can begin practicing perfect pronunciation. Especially in our Latin reading course, we can begin taking these lessons that we learn in Latin grammar and apply them in Latin reading. The only difference that I would say we should pay attention to in Latin reading is to remember that the Latin Vulgate Bible that we read in Latin reading was composed by St. Jerome in the fourth century of the Christian era. So while it's not technically medieval literature, it is getting further into church history and usually when we hear the Latin Vulgate read, it's going to be read in a, in a more modern, a medieval uh, Catholic church context. So we're often going to hear the Vulgate read with ecclesiastical pronunciation, which is a little bit different, a little bit softer than classical pronunciation. But here in this lesson in Article 7, we're focusing on classical pronunciation because as students of the classical liberal arts, as Catholic students, we're concerned with more than just ecclesiastical Latin. We're also concerned with the classical languages, with ancient Greek and with classical Latin, the Latin language of the Roman people. So our education seeks more than just familiarity with church Latin. We want to understand Latin historically as well. We want to understand classical Roman Latin and medieval ecclesiastical Latin. So we want to learn both. But much of what we learn here in Latin grammar, you can practice in your Latin reading course. And just make sure you are reviewing these lessons and being careful to speak or read slowly in Latin and practice these rules of pronunciation. The reason why I say that is not so that you can impress people with how your Latin sounds, but it's helpful to remember how to spell Latin words. It's helpful for you to understand the rules of the forms of Latin words and so on. So. There's more to good pronunciation than just sounding impressive. It's also important for the study of grammar and for uh, being able to spell Latin words correctly. So let's go ahead and walk through Article 7 here on the sounds of the consonants. We read up top, the consonants in Latin are sounded as in English. So this lesson doesn't include any information about consonants that sound like English consonants. So if it's not included here, you should read it or speak it just as you would speak that letter in English. So here we have just the exceptions, just the exceptions. The first rule, and again, this is classical Latin pronunciation. The letter K Remember the Latin letter names. The letter K is hard throughout. It is always like the English K. It's always hard in classical Latin. So if you saw the name Julius Caesar and you wanted to know how to pronounce Caesar in classical Latin, that first C would be hard, like a K. And then you have the diphthong A, A. So the name would actually be Caesar, Caesar, Julius Caesar, with a hard K at the beginning of that name. Now again, in church Latin, later in medieval history, after the fall of the Roman Empire, 
when the Latin became more Italianized and was made softer, it's not true that the letter K is always hard. We know that before the sounds E and E, it's softened to the CH sound, as in cello, cello. But in classical Latin, the letter K is always hard. Next, the combination of K and HA, K and HA. Remember to focus on the Latin names. In English, it would be CH. In Latin, it's K, HA. This is not a genuine Latin combination. In Latin words, it is spoken as the English or Latin ka or k. In Greek words, a kh or ka ha, commonly pronounced as k, k, k in German. So it's a combination of that guttural sound k with aspiration. Next, the letter G. G in classical Latin is hard throughout the language. It's always hard in classical Latin, as in get or give in English. Again, in ecclesiastical Latin, we know that the, the letter G softens before the sounds E and E. But in classical Latin, it's always hard, as in get or give. Next, the consonant ha, ha, the aspiration. At the beginning of a word, it is slightly pronounced. So it's just a gentle breath added at the beginning of a word. In the middle of a word, it is almost imperceptible. In other words, it's, it's hardly spoken at all when it's found in the middle of a word. So that's the letter ha. The yota, consonantal, the consonantal yoda, which is written with the letter that we call j, the consonantal y uh, e, sorry, I called it yota, but it's e. The consonantal e, written as j, has the sound of a broad y in English, like y in yule or yes. So the consonantal e almost becomes like the English y. And in later Latin, at least, it's, it's noted with the symbol that we call the letter J. Next, the letter N has a guttural nasal sound. A guttural nasal sound. So normally, we make the sound of the letter N up in the front of the mouth, and it's nasal because air passes through the nose. N, N, N. But when it comes before K, G, or K, when it comes before these guttural sounds, it blends with those guttural sounds to form what's called a guttural nasal. Now, we have this in English, and you see some examples there. In the word anchor, anchor, listen to this sound carefully. Listen to how the N and the C blend together. It's not anchor, anchor. That's not what we say. We change the sound of the N to make it more guttural, like the C, and we say anchor. Practice that sound, anchor. How that sound shifts and moves to the back of our mouth, that's what's meant by this phrase, a guttural, that means further back in the throat, and nasal, meaning the sound passes through the nose. So the letter N has a guttural nasal sound when it comes before a guttural sound, like K, G, or Ku. And then in English, we hear this sound in anchor. You hear that ng, anchor, and anguish anguish. So practice making that sound and you can feel it further back in your mouth. So normally the letter N is just like the English N, but before these guttural consonants, 
it has a guttural nasal sound that's slightly different from the normal N sound. Next, we have the combination of ku with u. They're always together. And when they're followed by a vowel, they basically have the sound of the English letters K and W. Or just like Q and U in the word quilt, qua, qua, qua. It's really just a combination of the sound of the consonant k and the vowel u, and then followed by another vowel, you would get that kuwa or kui or kuo. But you hear how that u becomes like a w before another vowel. So ku, treated like a consonant, is like the English kw or qu before a vowel. And we're told before the letter O, ku is just like K. In early Latin, ku was not followed by U. Later, when O was weakened to U, ku was replaced by K. Thus, we have the word quom, which became cum in later Latin. So, for simplicity's sake, Pronounce this like qua, but sometimes you may find it makes more sense to pronounce it just like the letter K. Still later, ku replaced K, yielding kuum. So it sort of went from ku to K and then back to ku. Next we have the letter er, er, and it says it's trilled. Er is trilled. That means it's not pronounced like the English R, 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 r. It's not pronounced like that. It's pronounced with the trilling of the tongue, like the Spanish r, r, r. And that takes some practice. Some students can make that sound easily. Some students really struggle to make that sound. If you do struggle to make that sound, it's probably because you're not using enough force. It takes some force to trill your tongue like that. R, r, r. Use a little more air to, to force that air through and vibrate the tongue. But the, the Latin R is trilled like the Spanish R. Take some practice. Next, the letter S and the double consonant X are always hard. They always make that hard sound. S always makes the S sound in hiss. It doesn't make the sound like in measure or tissue. It doesn't make those softer sounds. It's always hard. S, sibilant. S. And the consonant X, the double consonant, is the same way. It's always like X in axe. X, X, X. Always hard. Not softened, not voiced. So we know in English we have the X as in xylophone, xylophone, where it's voiced. The classical Latin X is never voiced like that. It's always hard, like KS. Next we have the letter T. T is always hard. It's always the hard T, T, T. It's never a softer sound like we have in English, as in nation. Nation. That sound, that soft sound of T in nation is never used in classical Latin. It's always that hard, clean T, T, T. Lastly, we have the consonantal U. The consonantal U, which, remember, was written with the symbol that looks like uh, the English letter V. And I know that that's, that's confusing. It's confusing because... In ancient Rome, it was written with the symbol of our V, but it was pronounced like the U, and then later it was rounded. So I, I know that gets messy and confusing. Just don't pay too much attention to that. Uh, let's just keep things simple. Almost everywhere you see this letter, it's going to be written in its rounded form, so it's really not worth fussing about. You just have to remember that if you see a picture of an old Roman inscription, and there are letters that look like V's, 
in the inscriptions, you know, carved into a, a, the wall of a building or carved into stone in ancient Rome, those letters that look like V's are actually U's, all right? So consonantal U, what this means is when the vowel U is used before another vowel, it has the sound of the English W. And I'll give you an example. Even in English, this is really what the W is. Take the word wet in English. Wet, wet, W-E-T. We see the letters, we see how it's spelled, but think about how it's actually spoken. Spoken. The first sound is simply U, and then that's followed by the sound E, and then the consonant T, T, T. When we slur them together, we get wet, wet, and you can see how that U at the beginning takes on the force of a consonant, like the W, we, we, we. But really what we're saying is u e t we we When we have that consonantal u followed by a vowel in Latin, it's normally pronounced like our w. In Greek, it was frequently transliterated by the diphthong omicron upsilon. So, we have the Latin name here which in classical Latin would not be pronounced Valerius, that's later Latin. It would be pronounced Valerius, Valerius, Valerius. And the proof of that is that when the Greeks wrote this name, they wrote it with the diphthong Omicron Upsilon, which is pronounced as U. So this name here is U. Alerios, Valerios, Valerios, because the Greeks wrote it with their letters based on how it actually sounded when the Romans pronounced it. It sounded like Valerios. So that letter U was not pronounced like, even though it looks like a V, it was not pronounced Valerios in ancient Rome. It was pronounced Wa, Valerius. And we can prove that by seeing how the Greeks transliterated it into their language. So that's all the content here for Article 7. Remember that any consonants in the Latin alphabet that are not listed here are pronounced just like the same consonant in English. These are the exceptions. And because they're exceptions, they're always going to be a little bit confusing, so make sure you study them carefully. Try to practice these rules for pronunciation as carefully as you can, especially this trilled R. That, that's a sound that really is important. But practice this as much as you can, but know that you're never going to be penalized in your Latin studies for not following this exactly. We talked about this in our Greek grammar course. If you're studying Greek grammar, we talked about attempts that some people make to try to restore perfect ancient Greek pronunciation, and it, it's just not worth the time and effort because it's uncertain. The same is true with classical Latin pronunciation. As long as you're close so that it helps you to spell the words accurately and helps you to understand the changes in forms that take place in, in, um, in etymology, which we'll study later, your pronunciation will be good enough. So it's good to, it's good to study this, to, to practice uh, as good pronunciation as you can, but not to trouble yourself with it. Don't let this become a distraction or a source of frustration for you. Just do your best. Keep reviewing this. Keep practicing. And in time, if we have some live classes and things like that, we'll practice pronunciation and I'll, I'll, I'll listen to your pronunciation and try to help you. Also, when I make videos that get into uh, Latin reading and translation, you'll be able to hear the language pronounced fairly well by me. So um, make use of those videos as well. But that's all for Lesson 7 here. I hope that's a helpful first reading of the lesson.
If there's anything in the lesson that you, you feel like you don't understand or anything that I said that you think was confusing or you're just not clear, ask any questions you have on the support forum on the course page and either I'll respond to them or, or someone else in the course uh, will respond when they see it, someone who can help. But ask any questions you have. And remember, this is just intended to be a pre-lection, a first reading to help you survey the material, see what needs to be studied, to prepare yourself to actually study it for mastery yourself. So that's your next task, to go back and read this over again, to study it, make sure you understand every line, everything you see in here. If there's anything in here you don't understand, let me know. Post your questions on the forum, and then use the assessments in the lesson to test yourself and see if you feel like you've got this content mastered, then submit your assessment when you feel confident that it's pretty good. And uh, you know, I'll give you some feedback to either confirm that you've, you seem to understand the material well, or you've got some things to work on. So don't stress about the pronunciation. Do your best. Study it for mastery. Let the assessments be your guide. And if you have any questions, ask. I hope that's helpful. God bless your studies.